What's up? We're back. <laughs> so Grayson had this idea for the intro. What is that? We're back. That actually took like way long. <laughs> that took way too well. long, and it's gonna be oh. so stupid. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ethan. What the heck is that? <laughs> I don't talk like that at all. That was your idea. All right. I had to right. burp, but it's like I'll help you. No, 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 where he doesn't remember anything correctly unless it was like seven years ago plus. To prove my point, Grayson, what did we do last night? <laughs> From what I remember, we made apple cinnamon brown sugar applesauce, right? No, Grayson, we actually went to the depot and bought some lug nuts. <laughs> I can't say it! You get what I mean? Grayson has short term memory loss, okay? <laughs> Which is okay for this video because we are going to be recalling the craziest childhood stories. That we had. So a lot of you guys know us by now. We're we're pretty crazy people. Uh, well, we like to think we are. I mean, I would pretty much do anything that anyone challenged me to do because you live once and because I'm freaking stupid. <laughs> Nowadays, Grace and I have cameras and YouTube to capture ourselves doing all these stupid, crazy things. But we didn't always have cameras to film the crazy things that we did. Nor did we have a place to post them. You guys are probably not gonna think some of these stories are true. Uh, I promise you that they yes. are. Trust me, they are. We're but just like really, really we're just weird. weird. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> story number one. This story starts with Ethan and I as babies. I'm talking like a year and a half old. I'm talking. I have more hair on my feet than I did on my head back then. <laughs> Ethan and I could full out sprint at 10 months old. Don't know how we learned how to do this. Don't know how you remember this. <laughs> so my mom is driving us home from the grocery store, buckled up in our car seats. When my mom buckled me into my high chair or car seat, she had to cross the straps because if not, I could climb out of them and I would just jump around. One time I was in my high chair and I wiggled out of the straps and I dove head first onto the ground. That's probably why I, uh, that's probably why I have these thoughts. <laughs> That's besides the fact. My mom goes to the back of the car, opens the trunk, and grabs the groceries. This is when Ethan and I came up with this plan to run into the house, lock my mom out. I don't even know how we knew <laughs> yeah. to lock the door. Or mind, you, like we, that. mind you, we couldn't even speak English yet. We couldn't. So we, we couldn't speak any language. We just did this stuff. Alright, go. <laughs> so my mom had to make like a short 15 second walk maybe around to the front of the house to get in because she was locked out of the garage. So when my mom walked in, Ethan was standing on top of the counter, spooning out handfuls of candy from this jar that my mom hid on the top shelf. How do you spoon things with your hands? Like oh, this. Okay, okay. Like I, this. I don't need to know anymore. I was catching them in my shirt like so <laughs> and running up to our room. I don't know how a one foot kid gets on a four foot counter. <laughs> that that doesn't foot. make sense to me. <laughs> he must have stood on my head or something like that. But we got the candy and we started getting crazy. Next story. This one's about me. I remember this vividly. I was probably like four years old. I went into our backyard and there was a bunch of pine trees all next to each other. I remember climbing one of the trees. I slithered out onto a branch and I purposely hooked myself by my underwear on a branch. I round the corner. I see Ethan like six feet in the air dangling by his underwear. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I was like, Ethan, how'd you get up there? He's like, no, 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 it's, it's fun, I want to be up here, don't leave me, leave me. <laughs> my ass was on fire, but I was having the time of my life. <laughs> We've always had this weird passion for just like... Torturing ourselves. Torturing ourselves. <laughs> just doing the stupidest things to ourselves. Honestly, I, I honestly think we just do this because we don't think that life should be serious. Yeah. It's a joke, honestly. It is. Everyone gets dead. Uh, story number three, full savage. Oh my gosh, I, I didn't really remember this one until Grayson said it. So we're still about four years old in this story. You know, when you're four years old, you can't stay home alone, so your parents probably have to get you a babysitter. Luckily for us, our babysitter was very cute. She was probably about a junior in high school, like our age now. You kissed her first. <laughs> okay, so wait, I remember, I remember, I remember. We were all sitting on the edge of my bed, like, like this, and we were telling scary stories or something like that. I don't really remember how I made the move. I do. I look over, and I see Ethan, like, he, he's like smiling and looking at her. Obviously, we both had such a big crush on this girl. <laughs> he leans in and he kisses her on the cheek. Oh, I went to cheek first. You went to cheek. I was like, Ethan, I, what? I took the steps. I was like, not gonna lie, I'm feeling like the man right now. <laughs> the girl looks at me and like was giggling and she was like looking at the both of us. 
And as she turned her head towards me, I leaned in and I kissed her on the lips. And it got so awkward. I was just smiling and everyone was like, um... What the f- what the f <laughs> I knew that was unacceptable to do that, Garrison. I didn't know any better. <laughs> Sorry, babysitter. Number four. This story takes place about a year later from the last story. I had recently seen bungee jumping on television. Then I remembered these things that my dad had in our garage called bungee cords. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, what, that's what that must be. At this house that we were living in, our next door neighbors had a swing set. A pretty big swing set, or at least it looked like that because I was microscopic. <laughs> Grayson and I snuck into their backyard one day when they weren't home and went on the swing set with a bunch of bungee cords. So I'm pretty sure when you go bungee jumping, you're supposed to tie the cords around like a metal post or, or part of a bridge or something that's really sturdy. In this case, I used my younger brother who is five pounds heavier than me. <laughs> I was always the bigger twin, so I always got stuck doing the more boring job, like holding Ethan up to get him in a tree or, or holding onto a bungee cord to let him have the time of his life jumping off a swing set. Or at this point, what we thought was going to be the time of my life. <laughs> Grayson was holding the edge of the bungee cord with two hands like this, and I took the end like this. So it had a hook on it, and I grabbed it like this with one single finger. So I jumped off, and on my way down, somehow my little finger slipped off the hook. And somehow my little mouth ate the hook. <laughs> Since we weren't supposed to be at our neighbor's house, we ran home and then I started to perform first aid on Grayson. And then I went to the hospital after my mom saw me bleeding on the family room table. <laughs> Number five. This story takes place about two days after the last story does. I don't know if you can see from there, but I have a scar on my lip and I also have one on my chin directly under that. So it was a nice summer afternoon and we were at the park eating cheeseburgers. But when Ethan and I were little, we never stopped to eat while we were playing. And I also didn't use the stairs. I would go up the slide, the back end, and run up because I was cool. Okay? And I ran up the slide with my mouth full of cheeseburgers. So on my way up the slide, I slipped and I fell. I fell directly on the stitches that I got two days ago <laughs> in my lip. And while sliding down the slide on my face, I managed to cut my chin open, and uh, later that night I had to get seven more stitches in my lip, and seven more on my chin, but I didn't spit out the cheeseburger! <laughs> Just goes to show how much I love food. <laughs> <laughs> Number six. So in this story, we weren't quite old enough to ride the school bus yet, However, we were old enough to borrow one of our neighbor's paintball guns. <laughs> we're in elementary school and our sister is two years older than us who was in middle school at this time. She rode the bus and we were super jealous of her because the bus was awesome. The bus was reason. cool, dude. At this point, we got home from school about a half hour earlier than our sister did. And every single day of the week, we was, I'm sorry, Cameron. This is horrible. This is so bad thinking about it. Like, no, no wonder she hates us. <laughs> so Grayson and I would hide in the bushes at the end of our driveway and shoot our sister with a paintball gun every single time she got home from school. Every single time she got off the bus, we were there like, ah! And so she wouldn't tell us we let her paintball us back. So what was the point of paintballing her? To get paintball, there was no point in this! I, 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 again, I think we just like torturing ourselves. <laughs> it's bad, dude. Like, why are we like this? <laughs> why am I like this? I don't understand. Number seven, this story takes place when we were finally cool enough to ride the bus. We had an old grumpy bus driver who was very mean to kids. If you don't like kids, don't have a job where you have to work with kids. We wanted to fix that. We wanted to, you know... No, we just kept, we wanted to mess with them. Kind of. <laughs> we looked a lot more alike when we were little, so we could pull off these pranks and stuff, where we would basically freak people out into thinking that they were seeing things because there was more than one of us. Especially old people. Yes. <laughs> like our bus driver. I swear, our bus driver did not look at the road the entire time he was driving. Eyes in the mirror, I don't know how he did it. Just looking in the mirror and staring at all of us, into our souls. Yeah. Just sucking our youth out of us. <laughs> We were the last stop, out of a hundred kids on our bus, we were the last stop. All the seats were empty. Ethan and I would remove our seatbelts. Do not do this! I do not condone this. Don't do this in a car or on a bus. And slide under seats into different rows and different sections of the bus. So I would pop up in one seat in the back, and Grayson would pop up in the seat right next to him. Then we would wait for him to put his eyes back on the road for one more second, and then switch up again. This guy was getting dizzy. I swear it was like really <laughs> dangerous for us to do this, because he was like this. <laughs> Number eight. This is called the Naked Snow Run. We would do the Naked Snow Run every year, every time it snowed, so it was like an annual thing. This particular Naked Snow Run took place as soon as we moved to a different town and we were in a new neighborhood. The Naked Snow Run also took place in broad daylight. <laughs> uh, we should say what the Naked Snow Run is. The Naked Snow Run is when Ethan and I get naked and run in the snow. <laughs> Dude, why? Well, I, I don't, don't know I why. Don't know. When did it start? 
Why is it not ended? <laughs> I <laughs> After the plow truck came, there was huge mounds of snow. You know the naked mound laying down slide combo? That's about seven points. The rest of my year would be complete if I had done this trick successfully and I won the naked snow run. I did a forward roll, I slid down the mound, and the ice <laughs> cut my ass. <laughs> it cut his whole left butt cheek right down. He had two butt cracks now. For that, I gave him the win. I won the annual naked snow run, but I couldn't sit for two weeks. However, my year was still complete. <laughs> what the f- What is wrong with I'm, us? We're, we're, we're deep into this video, and I, uh... What is wrong with us? Number nine. I was always getting hurt. It was, it was always, always me. Grayson. He always had the boring job, and he was always getting hurt. So, we did this thing. Well, our sister tricked us into doing, doing this thing. <laughs> she was like, hey guys, I think this would be really fun if I wrap you guys in a blanket like a burrito and then duct tape it shut and then bounce you on the trampoline. We had our arms and legs taped together. We were burritos, basically, in blankets. Within three seconds, I was in the air, upside down, and I came crashing down onto the metal pole. Gore, gore, gore warning. warning. Within a matter of seconds, my brains were spilling out on the trampoline. Oh, I couldn't get out of the burrito. I was like, ah! We went to the hospital, and uh, burrito Ethan was sitting there by my side the whole time. And I was still in the burrito seat. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10. We saved this one for last because this was like right before we got our first video camera. Like weeks before. Grayson had a broken knee and he was on crutches. For some reason, Grayson and I, literally just us two, walked our asses to the end of the block by the main road. There was a little grass patch chilling there that Grayson would crutch on and as a car passed, I would come out of the woods and flying drop kick <laughs> and drop kick him onto his face and I'll land on my back. Why? why? I don't why know why. Do and then a car would stop and be like, they'd be like, oh my god, are you okay? Why did you do that? And then we'd be like, ah! oh my god. I guess it was always in us to just be idiots and try to make people laugh. It was, but um, in that case, we weren't really making people laugh. We were making ourselves laugh. <laughs> Moral of the stories, we always did really stupid things. We post these crazy videos because, well, simply just because we have a camera on YouTube now. <laughs> also, after filming this video, I feel like this is um, a very necessary thing to say. I'm sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> yes, I'm very sorry from the bottom of my heart. And, um, I, really, I, can't, I just can't say that I'm not going to continue to do stupid <laughs> things. And thank you guys for being a part of this conversation. We really needed someone to tell stories to. We were just telling them to each other and we were laughing. So we wanted to tell you guys and, uh, hopefully you found some of them funny. Thumbs up if you want, honestly. It's been a fun Tuesday. And subscribe and put our post notifications on because we post twice a week. And our next video is going to be on a random day this week. So peace. We'll see you guys before next Tuesday. Tuesday.